guys, before I continue and uh, give you like a uh, more like more of today, I want to ask you for a favor, right? Like you know, like you look at the slides. Uh, maybe it's not the best. I do my best to prepare some slides for you, something to look at, some reference material. And to be honest, I would like also probably you to uh, uh, maybe turn your mic on. I want to open the floor for a discussion now about how are you guys following me? Like, how do you study? Like, are you taking notes in addition to these notes? Are you printing those out and taking notes on them? Do you have a calculator handy? Like, what? Because I cannot see you. Like, you know, I remember when I when uh, when you when you used to have uh, like normal classes. I ask my students to simply bring all the tools like, you know, calculator, all that, like all every class. They have their own handbook. They have, you know, uh, uh, some uh, so somewhere you can they can take notes and, you know, they have some ruler and pen and pencil. Sometimes they have uh, colors. So I can, since I don't see you, I want to get feeling of what do you guys do. Show your hands if you want to speak out, please. Don't be shy. It's very important for me. And uh, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, OK, so uh, we have here, uh, we have Gord. Please go ahead. Uh, I have a calculator, a printer, and a pad of paper and pencil. I print off a lot of the PowerPoints, and I keep notes on a separate pad of paper as well. That is amazing. Thank you so much. How about you, Jilly? Well, um, if uh, because I don't for me, I downloaded that uh, PDF file already. But if you want, if you want us to really participate, I think I think you should use a whiteboard and uh, and uh, do some and let us calculate and give you the answer. Uh, OK, so the thing is uh, for your comment about I must use or sh I should use a uh, like the whiteboard the, the thing is whiteboard i tried them but they work on a tablet like for me i couldn't use the whiteboard on my laptop i mean it is it is there i can use it but it's not 100 percent functioning if i don't have a touch screen or tablet and so that's why i don't have this one so it's not going to happen however however we can still do what you're looking at if i ask you which is going to happen starting probably next week or maybe uh, end of last uh, next class uh, is by um, if I ask you to do some calculation, you can simply use the chat here to type in your number. So that still can happen. You can type in your number in the chat zone. OK, uh, Gord, you want to say something again? Go ahead. Uh, I've, I've had that happen in a few other classes, and what what happened in those classes was um, time became a major constraint because it took a lot longer than what was expected for each person to try and figure out the answer as we go. And it seems that we never got, the, the instructor always went past our time because he was trying to catch up from waiting for the answers. Fair enough, and I guess, I guess uh, if I go the same way, it's gonna happen. What I feel myself, I feel that we're going faster than any year not really that much fast but uh, since i provide all the calculation i can just read it for you and just kind of point out on my screen it is different from when i was in class where i built everything from scratch which takes takes more time and on the background something you don't see it takes me more 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 effort and more time uh, to build those uh, slides but really gord i like the way you do it uh, some you know I, I don't know who does that but this is what i don't like what i don't like is you are sitting on your at the back of your screen uh, watching as if you're watching Netflix or watching a movie theater. OK, that's not you're not going to get the best of this class. Really, the best of, of, of this class you will get only and only if you are ready as if you are in class. The difference is we are separated by a few kilometers where, where I, wherever I am, wherever you are, but you have to do the same thing. You have a note uh, notes and you can take notes and you have a calculator. That's the only way you can get, especially with this design class. OK, it's not kind of a class that's just like maybe like maybe I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't teach other class like environmental, but I know that there, there are lots of discussion and probably recording is enough. But in this class, it's not because you will see there is math. There is something you have to do it. Uh, 
So again, if you can follow Gord uh, example, it would be great. Uh, you know, get your calculator, your ruler, uh, place to add some notes. Uh, the thing is, I cannot. I'm not hundred percent sure that I can provide uh, the like uh, error-free slides. You can see today, I uh, I I did a mistake in my slide, and I will correct that, and I will upload it before the end of uh, like today. Uh, so I don't want you guys to print and reprint and reprint and reprint because if I keep changing my version by fixing the mistake, so I think this is a lot of printing. But uh, I guess uh, I, I maybe you can keep this for when I when I finish. Uh, you can simply copy your your notes into my slides. It, that's something. It's your preference, not my preference. But the thing is, don't please stay, sit down and just watch like Netflix or a movie. Uh, OK, so you need to interact. Even I don't see you, you have to do some calculation on the same time I do it. And if you feel that I'm going very fast, I can give you all the right to stop me and slow me down. If that's help, if, if that helps you to catch uh, the discussion. For, for myself, when I sit here and take notes, it, it actually it works better for me this way because um, I have a hard time what keeping up on, on a good day. So when I make notes, if there's something that I need to come back and review, I can note what time in the recording is at, and so I can go back myself and review it. And then if I have questions outside of that, then it's easier for me to you, for me to uh, reference which part and where in the recording. Hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. Okay. Uh, so Brody, you, guys, if you, I, I want to hear your voice, like you know, I don't know why you're shy. I said before that I'm not gonna bite you, so you can simply, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, speak out. Um, well, for me, like <clears throat> I like looking at example problems and then referring back to those as I do uh, more practice problems. Like it helps me if I do the physics myself and kind of get that background. But obviously we need the explanation done, which you do in the slides. So it'd be nice to have like a little bit more practice on top of assignments and things like that. You can see I uh, you can see uh, Brody like I, I know that uh, uh, equations are dull. Nobody loves equation except a very, very few mathematicians. They uh, finish uh, pages and pages of derivation only with dull uh, dumb uh, symbols. Uh, I myself understand that, and I, I try my best to put everything in action using number. And you can see that from from my lecture. OK. And so what happened is uh, I want from you guys, if you look at my slide and you feel the slides are missing something and potentially there will be some small errors. I'm not saying I'm a fatal mistake because teachers are supposed not to do that, but we are human, so we can produce some errors. Same as today, like I copied one uh, one section and I never changed the number in the other slide. So if you quote one of those, uh, please uh, feel free uh, email me. I typically catch them when I teach uh, when I read my slides and I if you notice that I always update my my slides one more time. I go back and modify them and upload them one more time. I know that this is maybe not the best for you because simply you have many version. And please, all the time, if you download, overwrite. Don't uh, copy, huh? overwrite the old version because the latest one is the best one from my perspective. OK. So again, I, I'm asking you for a favor. Anytime you see my slide and if you see little mistake, for example, in the last class when I talked about uh, material properties, there was an example by the end that I found out that uh, H over 2 for unknown reason it was removed. OK, because in, in, in PowerPoint, sometimes we say send to the back or bring it to the front so it hides something on the back. So uh, this morning I changed it and I uploaded it one more time. OK. Anyway, anyone wants to add more things? Uh, anything you think is going to help you in my class? Uh, sorry, like my point was just uh, like your slides are doing the job like they're good and even if there is a typo i mean i don't know if it's the same for everybody else but with context i understand what you're saying so it's not a huge deal in that sense um but just like having practice problems so like in strength and materials we had a booklet and we'd have examples done up from the booklet on the board and then we would uh we would do the rest 
type of thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know what, like Brody, first of all, first of all, uh, I know some of you may be following probably 95%, 100%, and if they come across any type of mistake, typo, so I know what they do. They just go over ahead because they are confident 100% that this is a typo, but let me tell you that. No, that's not for everyone. Sometimes people, when they study and they come with a small number, they are totally confused and they don't know what's going on because of this little typo. OK, so don't say that's small. If you would email me and that's an effort from your side to benefit the entire class. If you email me, I'm happy to go back and do it. Number two, number two, if you're talking about practice class, you can simply create your own booklet. Because simply, uh, for example, look at this place. So watch this uh, slide. So now here we're talking about how to uh, give you a beam. Correct, I gave you a beam and you want to say, oh, you know what? I don't want to see exactly the same beam. I want to see a different beam. Go for yourself and simply add here 125 M bar and solve it. OK, here my job is to give you an example by numbers to show you the procedure and what's the theory and what's the math behind the, those numbers. Uh, but I don't see that I just go ahead and just copy this one and change the 700 to 800 and the 400 to 350 and the three bars to four bars. This is something if you wish, you can do that. But the thing, sir, is during quiz or exam, we don't know what's in your mind. What we don't know what's, what we are going to have in the exam. So it would have been nice if you will give us few more examples in the class when you meet again, if we're doing it right or wrong. Uh, OK, so listen, so I have been teaching this concrete now. If I tell you the number, it's kind of will surprise you. I have been teaching this class for 13 times. 13 times, so which, which means I have done the same thing for 13 times and I have done exams for 13 times. And you know what? You just have to combine what I teach you with your with your own thing, with your own. And so is that the skills that you will solve on my exam is not only coming from my class, it comes from other classes together. OK, and again, every every year I have people to get uh, they get a plus and I go the same way. I don't change my way. I go, I go and I give them those examples by number. I can tell you to maybe this year for me is the best because I before I used to write on the uh, on the board and uh, students, it's up to them how they take notes. Some they go take notes, some they take bad notes. We know that, huh? So I would say this is this year, this semester, it should be the best out of the last 13 times because simply those notes are are tired notes, not individual notes. OK, so so you combine the notes, you combine them with the assignment and this will bring you to a level where you can write your exam, my exam very, very nicely, very comfortably and you can get a hundred percent. There is no sober science, guys. It is kind of a, a, a procedure. Domenico, you want to say something? You're so quiet for the last two classes or three classes. No, I just that's just the way Dave teaches. <laughs> so, so, can, so how, how does how? Uh, because you know what? I'm a very big fan of Dave, by the way. You oh, know, he, at some point, at some point, he showed me his video, and I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. Oh, please, not that his way. His videos are pretty good explanation. Like they do a good job of showing you, but. Um, it's just nice, like the way you taught Safi or even Civil 3D, like uh, on the spot, like hands on rather than just sending us off with a video. But that what I said really has nothing to do with what you're teaching. I was just being a, an idiot. OK, no problem. You're not an idiot or so. Uh, uh, OK, you know, guys, guys, please like, you know, please like, you know, try to work with the way I like because not only I'm, I'm not I'm a, I'm a Malaysia person that would don't want to call, like scan one paper from a textbook, which I have so many. I'm not lazy like you think. I work every day until 10 p.m. OK, every day until 10 p.m. even Sunday. So it's not lazy. It, I'm a teacher, you know, but I have been teaching now. You will be surprised if I tell you that the, 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 how many years 
I'm teaching since 1996. From the day I graduate, I became a teaching assistant in my university, so I have so many years of experience. And trust me, when we make things super easy for students, we're not really being them a, a, a favor. I can tell you, I can share with you some of my experience over the last few uh, weeks. So students, they are trying to solve the, uh, the, the, uh, the assignment, OK? And so what they do is they never go to the slide, they never go to the video, and simply they sit down and try to read the assignment and try to start right away solving the assignment. And that creates a problem because you cannot remember 100% of what I said, OK? So, so what's the easiest? Is it easy to go and read the slide or easier to watch the video or easier to text the Tahir midnight and ask him what is the HS or what's the FS? So, because it, it looks like there is some more accessibility right now. You can text me anytime, right? And you're expecting an answer while the answer is already on the slides or in the video. Trust me, education is not easy. If you want to learn, you have to be in vain. You have to go and dig because that's what you will do What when you graduate. When you graduate, there is no spoon, spoon feeding. When you graduate, you have to dig and find the information yourself. We're not doing you any favor when we kind of, you know, here we go, everything's together in the same, you know, you know, same place, everything is coincide. Yes, from your perspective as a student, you will, because everything is in the same place, it means, you know, less effort. It means I can finish all my assignments. I can probably have more time for myself or my, for my, my, you know, my family or my life, right? But the thing is, don't expect that this is going to happen when you graduate. You will have to dig on your own. And really what we're teaching you here, it's supposed to be, we teach you how to learn. We're supposed to teach you how to learn. Okay, so anyway, if you really feel what I already good for you, if you don't feel it, uh, you need to think about it, OK? Uh, anyway, I'm happy to receive comments. Uh, and even you say one comment, I will just combine it with my experience and give you the best from my perspective as a teacher for those how many years. OK, now let's move on to uh, on to the slides one more time. So you guys, you can see, you can see uh, so far what I did is I'm able to simply find the moment of resistance, the MR. So this beam, the way it is right now with all the dimensions, with all the rebar, with all the concrete strength, it can only take maximum of 310.67. That's the maximum moment that this beam can handle. We always say moment of resistance or beam capacity, beam capacity. And again, you can see uh, I went ahead and I know that this beam I know that this beam is uh, properly reinforced or tension failure or uh, or ductile failure. But remember, huh? we don't know so far whether this beam is safe or unsafe. And so please don't get confused. We don't know so far whether my beam is safe or unsafe. Those are two different discussion. OK, are you following so far? We cannot whether our beam is safe or unsafe. What we know, number one, is that our beam is properly reinforced and we're able to do all the math and is able to figure out the beam capacity. In order for us to judge whether our beam is safe or unsafe, we have to see and um, remember, so far, does anybody know that this beam is simple beam or continuous beam or a, or a cantilever? Did I say anywhere that this, be, this is the case? In the first uh, page, you said it's simply supported. Uh, it's it's here. Only look at this, so you can see it is it is here. It is only a D, and we have never covered the Gs uh, so far. So so far, I found the A, which is equivalent rectangular stress block, and then the C, the stress distribution. I'm able to see to say what is my uh, the beam is properly reinforced, and I'm able to find MR only and only if a D when I'm trying to find what is the maximum load that this beam can take? Then I said it's simply supported. Are you following? OK, so now let me show you. So now uh, in, in, in this problem here, uh, I'm saying here, so this beam right now, uh, it is simply supported. And we guys, we know if the beam is simply supported like so with a span of eight meter, 
and uh, uh, under the load it will bend and the fact the moment that will affect this beam is connected to the span and connected to the load you can see it's here because it's simply supported it means the moment is equal to the factor of the load multiplied by the span square divided by eight remember this is only for simply supported if the statical system or the structural system of the beam changes, like let's say it's a cantilever or it's a continuous beam, that's a different discussion. You are not going to use the same equation. This equation is only for simply supported beams. OK, now guys, remember, so this this will be if I apply load with a value WF and the span is L, then the moment is equal to M uh, WL squared div divided by eight. Now, sir. Go ahead. Uh, sir. There should be no X, sir. Because there is no X. That's, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, that's a multiplication. Huh? It is W multiplied by L squared over L over eight. Uh, I, I can remove. I can remove that if if X re confuses you. Yeah. This means the, it's multiplication. Remove the X, so it will be only W L squared. Okay. Twenty four. So okay, I'll change that. Okay. So it's W L squared over eight. Guys, listen. In order for for and remember. We know from the previous uh, slide, we know that this beam can take maximum of 310.67. And remember also, in order for our beam to survive, it means MR should be more or equal than MF. Would you agree? The beam has to have a, a capacity more or equal than the applied load or applied moment. And when you do this, this math, you will see uh, it means the maximum factor the load that I can apply to this beam is equal to 38.83. Very simple. Remember, larger and uh, equal is kind of subjective. So how large? How large? So the MR should be twice or three times or five times MF. We always cancel the large or equal and replace it by the equality. So we can see I went from here to there. I used only the equal because simply larger, it leads to over design. So I'm saying here, is this much on the left side and this is the bending moment that comes from the WF then you can find what is the WF now let me ask you what's WF WF is the maximum uniform load that you can apply to the beam without failure please let me ask you if we apply this load what would be the moment you take the moment the load you multiply by the span square divided by eight, so they get 310. And what's 310? It's the beam capacity. If we apply 35, is that okay? If we apply load, uniform load, 35 kilo newton per meter, is that okay? Yes. yes. Yes, it's okay because if you take 35, multiply it by eight squared, divided by eight, for sure it will give you a moment less than the beam capacity. Can we apply 40 kilo newton per meter? No, no, you cannot because simply if you take the 40, you multiply 40 times 8 squared divided by 8, for sure you will get more than 310. And because you get more than 310, it means you exceeded the beam capacity. It means your beam will fail. OK, guys, don't get confused. Don't get confused. It's a two different discussion, two different topics to say my beam is properly reinforced or balanced or or compression failure and a different discussion where we say my beam is safe or unsafe, safe or unsafe. Those are two different discussions. OK, now uh, guys, I provide you this slide. So this slide just has a summary of all <clears throat> the mathematics in this board. You can see number one. Sigma forces in the X direction. This will give you C is equal to T total compression. In your concrete equals to total tension in the in the rebar and we can simply connect the tension and compression to uh, the strength and the area and the stresses using this equation in rebar you multiply the stress which is phi sf yield by the area of the steel not all bars only of the main reinforcement for compression you multiply the stress which is alpha one phi c fc dash by the area exposed to the stress which is a times b that's the area exposed to the stress now, next is you can find uh, the depth of the equivalent compression block from this equation. Remember, alpha one roughly or approximately is equal to 0.8. Beta one is equal to 0.9.
and remember this is okay valid between for FC dash between 20 and 40 MBA. And remember beta one is that it relates the depth of the neutral axis to the depth of the equivalent rectangular block. Okay, then finally we can estimate the moment either from the tension or from the compression by multiplying the tension by with the lever arm or uh, the compression with the same lever arm. Lever arm equals D minus A over two. OK, now. I think we still have 20 minutes, so I think I can finish question uh, example number two, which again, it's another check problem. Why it's a check problem? You also have to look at this problem here. So why it's check? Because the concrete dimensions are given. The amount of steel is given. Uh, this, the strength of the material is also given. Do you see that? So you can see here, everything is given. So what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to tell whether my beam, my beam is overly reinforced or probably reinforced or balanced. OK, what we do to solve? You will be surprised. We will follow exactly 100 percent, not 99.9 percent, 100 percent of what we have done, you know, 10 minutes or before the break. OK, so very simple. What you have to do is uh, is. Um, you can see I just copy and change the numbers. Huh? So what you do is you say, what is my area of steel? So the area of steel I have my beam is reinforced with 725 M guys by now. You should be able to memorize that every 25 M has a 500 mils of uh, square of uh, of rebar. And that's why the total area of steel is equal to 7 multiplied by 500. So which means we have a 3500 millimeter square of rebar. Remember, this does not include any other rebar. For example, if you have a skin reinforcement on the side, don't include them. If you have a steer up hanger, don't include them. Those are the main reinforcement. <clears throat> Next is nothing new. We don't know whether this beam is a balanced or compression or tension. So what we do is so which means we don't know whether my stress in the steel is equal or less than a field. So what we do is we start with our sum. Assumptions are great. They help us mathematically. However, we have to check them. OK, so once you assume that your rebar has yielded, it means the stress in the rebar equals a field equal to 400. Then we can find the T or the total tension force in your rebar. Nothing super. You multiply the stress or the reduced stress. So 0.85 times 400. You multiply it by the area of the steel. You get force in Newton. You divide. You convert this into a kilo Newton. OK, now. Again, one more time, all the time, all the time, whether it's balanced, compression, tension, it doesn't matter because of the stability or the equilibrium all the time. T is equal to C. Total tension in rebar must be equal to total compression in, in concrete. And because of this equality, we can simply solve for the A. So we can, in this equation here, you can see alpha 1 is a constant, phi C is a constant, FC dash is a constant and the width of the beam is also given and we can find the depth of the equivalent compression block, which is a 228.85. Please one more time when you study and if you come across a, 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 a come across any uh, calculation error or typo error, please notify me. I can I kind of did my due diligence and I <clears throat> I check the number in in my slide, but uh, again, do it please do it please. Now next is you take your A and you draw your strain diagram. Why do we draw the strain diagram? And you can see in color here because simply we want to find <coughs> the strain in the steel at failure. So one more time, uh, this number is always 0.0035. That's the maximum strain in, comp in concrete in compression. And then I'm going to assume here epsilon s. I'm going to say how much used this geometry. So we know the C. C is very simple. We take the A, divide uh, the A by beta 1, always 0 0.9. You get the C, 254. So the C is 254.3.
and the D or the effective depth of the beam is 400. So we have a 147.7 left. So you can see we have two triangles. They are colored with different colors, yellow and pink. And we do similarity of triangles to find the epsilon S, not super science. So we can come here. We can find the epsilon S. How? Very simple. 0 0.0035 divided by 254.3 equal epsilon S divided by 147.7. You saw before epsilon S, and here we go. The number is 0 0.002. In relation to the epsilon yield, is exactly equal. Huh? So the 0 0.002, which is the strain in the rebar when this beam failed, happens to be equal exactly to the epsilon yield. What does it mean? It means it means this is a balanced failure. OK, this means a balanced failure. Even for a balanced failure, it means the assumption was true because at balanced failure, it means the rebar has started to yield, which means the stress in the rebar equal to 400, which means my assumption was true. You can see my assumption is here. Huh? My assumption is my stress, the stress in the rebar is equal to the F yield equal to 400, which is true only for two cases, balance it and tension failure. For compression failure is a different story. OK, so now my assumption was true. And guys, when I say my assumption was true, it means my calculations that I have done so far based on that assumption is are also correct. Would you agree? If I say my assumption was true, it means FS equal to F field equal to 400. It means all my calculations so far was true or correct. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. OK, now we go to the next slide, which is the last slide for today, which is how to find this beam capacity. This beam capacity, it is nothing more than you go back and you find your total compression force in your concrete and total tension force in your rebar. You multiply each by the lever arm, which is D minus A over two. Then you find the moment. We have to do it from the tension. We have to do it from the compression and they must agree. If they don't agree, it means I have done one mistake in my calculation, so I have to go back and review that. If they agree to a limit, and guys, look at this, please. I know that this is kind of a discussion happens every year. Somebody will say, how about Tahir? If I estimate from the tension, I found this number. And if I estimate from the compression, and I found 339.71. They don't agree. There is a difference right now. The difference is 0 0.03. What do you think? Did I do a mistake or that's OK? Guys, you can see we're not really copying every single number on our calculator. If we do, then they agree to the to, to eight numbers. However, since we're uh, kind of we have a, a rounding, when we find the C, you can see I only mention or I only list the two decimal places here, which means practically you will see the number have to agree probably to 0.1 kilo per meter. OK, so don't be so fussy. Don't be so picky. If they agree to a 0.1 kilo meter, it means it means they are OK. That's kind of rounding error. However, if you find one 339.74 and the other one is uh, 300, 360, what do you think? This is a huge difference. It means I have done one mistake somewhere in my calcs, so I have to go back and review it. Guys, is that clear? Yes. Yep, that's clear. OK, now, guys, with this, I can tell you, you can solve you can solve the question one on the assignment. So the assignment comes in three questions. Question one, question two, question three. Question three is very simple. It will take you maybe two minutes to do it. Huh? Two minutes to do it. OK, question two will be next class. And I know uh, uh, the assignment deadline in the G2L is uh, on uh, this coming Wednesday, which I'm going to finish my material tomorrow. And that's why I'm going to change my assignment deadline to end of Thursday. So Thursday of next week by midnight. Is that OK? Are you following any comment? I'm OK with that, yeah. OK, any question, guys? Tahir, sure. I'm having a brain fart. That 0 0.8, the stress, that's a constant, right? 
Can you please uh, point me to where? Uh, um, like right, even right here, your CR calculation. Your my. Okay, so oh, oh boy, did is my alpha one. Yes. Alpha one, and then phi C, boy six five, and then FC dash, and this is your A, and this is your uh, width of the beam uh, B, and this is the lever arm in between bracket, which is six hundred fifty. Oh my God. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. The num this number is correct, hundred percent. But looks like this number is uh, it has to be 400 huh? because the depth of the beam is 400. Again, those are one of the silly mis type of mistakes. However, this number is still correct. Huh? This number MR, whether you do it from tension compression, really what has to happen, this number, it should be 400. I will correct this one. Thank you so much. Is that what confuses you? No, but uh, I'm happy you found that. <laughs> OK, so what's your question, sir? Just the um, the the zero point eight is your. Uh, is, is, that's always the value, uh, Dominico. Yeah, that's what alpha alpha it's, always, it's always zero point eight, correct? That's alpha one. Yeah, yeah. it's point eight. And that's an agreement. Remember, it's always zero point eight. Yeah. OK, guys, listen, Domenico. So alpha one and beta one are transformation of your parabola into equivalent rectangular block. They are supposed to be function of FC dash as per code. However, uh, if we in this class use always FC dash between 20 and 40, so the point 8 and point 9 for alpha 1 and beta 1 respectively is a good approximation. I'm trying to save you some effort, make, trying to make your life easier. You don't have to go to the to the equation alpha 1 and beta 1. So every time alpha 1, we replace it by point 8, a good approximation. Did I answer the question, sir? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Guys, if you're happy, I will see you guys in 20 or 19 minutes from now. As a surveyor. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Thank you. See you guys.